Welcome in, everybody, to a little bit of a bonus segment here on the Aaron Torres Pod YouTube channel. Uh, do me a quick favor, though. We're about to jump in and talk about a busy weekend for Coach Prime, both in the portal and then right before I recorded a marquee high school recruit committing to Coach Prime. He don't take days off this time of year, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk about it before we dive in. Do me a quick favor. Make sure to hit that subscribe button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, really does help this channel grow, helps this audience grow. We're closing in on 30K. We work hard here behind the scenes. We love and appreciate all of your support. Click that subscribe button so we can keep doing what we're doing. Speaking of doing what we're doing, how about Coach Prime? Busy week for Coach Prime. Interesting week for Coach Prime. And look, by now you know what happened last Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? Uh, Coach Prime coming out of the season said, listen, we need a lot of help along the offensive line kind of called out the O-line after that UCLA game, and whether you loved them or you hated them for doing it, it was clear that an upgrade was needed along the offensive line. Well, I bring it up because last week we all talked about Jordan C in the number one high school offensive tackle in America committing to Colorado. Thought it was huge in my personal opinion. Uh, obviously, I saw a lot of negativity from the non-coach prime believers basically saying, well, you need more than one player on an offensive line, and then I saw the, well, I mean, is he even going to start as a freshman? It's like, listen, Alabama's starting right tackle, Caden Proctor, is a true freshman. Last year, Kelvin Banks started as a true freshman at Texas, and now he is one of the best offensive linemen in America for a team that makes the college football playoff. So, yes, an offensive lineman can start as a true freshman if they are good enough, but I do think the questions of can you fill out a line around Jordan Seaton, assuming that he's good enough, can you do that? And can you do it quickly because there clearly needs to be upgrades? Well, I bring it up because the answer appears to be yes. Because over the weekend, how about this? And I'm recording here at 3.45 Eastern time here on a Sunday, okay? And more might be coming here over the next couple hours. But over the last 36 hours since Saturday morning, how about this? Coach Prime has gotten commitments from five players out of the transfer portal that includes four offensive linemen, count them four, two coming from the power five level where they were starters. And oh, by the way, right before I was about to record, they also just got a commitment from one of the top 100 players in America, a wide receiver out of Texas. So I want to break it all down. It was a busy, 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 busy weekend for Coach Prime. So let's start with the offensive line. Again, you don't need me to tell you it was not good. Coach Prime said as much. And, and, and frankly, we talked about it last week when Jordan Seaton was committed um, or when Jordan Seaton committed. But he, he was not committed. He committed. Was was committed is a completely different thing, okay? Sorry about that. A little bit of a trip up on my part, okay? But Jordan Seaton committed. And what I said was, if you listen to interviews with Coach Prime, he said our two priorities this offseason, we want to run the ball better, and we want to stop the run better. And basically, again, inferring we need help along the front. Front on the offense, offensive line, and of course on the defensive line as well. So I bring it up because what happened this weekend? Well, I wake up early on Saturday morning, and I see the news that the first commitment of the weekend has come in for Colorado. Oh, it is Yakiri Walker, a center from, of all places, the University of Connecticut. Now, many of you would sit there and ask, Torres, what do you mean by of all places? For those of you who do not know, I went to UConn. I know the football program well. Uh, I still believe in Coach Mora. And what I'm here to tell you, this kid is a very good player. The statistics don't back up that UConn had a great offensive line this year. But as somebody who watched way too much UConn football, I am here to tell you, um, you know, there was inconsistency at the quarterback spot, you know, a couple different starters, which threw off the run game. The bottom line is what I'm here to say is two years ago, the offensive line was one of the best in college football, at least at the group of five level. Um, and beyond that, I would also say that, you know, they had a top 35 run defense a few years ago. So you carry Walker commits, thought it was a very nice way to start the weekend. Pretty much as soon as he committed, the next piece of news came out. That was that Tyler Johnson, who originally, it's worth noting, committed to Texas out of high school. He ends up transferring to Houston which of course was in the big 12 this year, power five Houston will now be in the same conference as Colorado next year. Well, I bring it up because shortly thereafter on Saturday morning, Tyler Johnson, former four-star recruit played at Texas, played at Houston commits to Colorado out of the portal. 
second major commitment of the weekend. He's an offensive guard. Um, and a guy, again, the kind of guy that you want if you're Coach Prime. Power five experience, a veteran player, the kind of player you need to build this offensive line the way you want, to be able to run the ball the way you want, to be able to throw the ball the way you want, all that good stuff. Well, then it got quiet for Coach Prime in Colorado. That's right. They went like a whole six or seven hours without getting a commitment from an offensive lineman. Then about what, what was it, 9, 10 o'clock at night, Khalil Benson, former offensive tackle from the Indiana Hoosiers. Indiana fired Tom Allen. A lot of their best players hit the portal. I saw one of their offensive linemen was actually visiting uh, Indiana this weekend or uh, visiting Auburn this weekend, excuse me. So, you know, they even though the team struggled, they had some talent along that offensive line. Well, Khalil Benson, he was on campus in, in Boulder. And guess what happened this weekend? Khalil Benson commits to Colorado. That's right. Starting offensive tackle from the Big Ten. You can say that Indiana wasn't great, but these are the kinds of players that you need. And then the weekend wraps up. Again, it's only 345 Eastern time, so stuff can change. But Justin Mayer's a multi-year starter from UTEP committed as well. So let's talk about that really quick. Uh, by the way, there was a fifth transfer portal commitment over the weekend. Terrell Timmons Jr., uh, wide receiver from NC State. He was their fourth or so leading receiver. He commits as well. There's also a high school commitment we're going to get to in a minute. But I want to start with the offensive line because let me say this. I know there's going to be negativity. I know people are going to say you can't rebuild an O-line through the portal. You can't do it overnight and blah, 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 this and that. But I'm here to say there is no team in America that is perfect. There is no team in America that has all the answers at every single spot. Go watch the college football playoff. Michigan struggling at the quarterback spot. Um, Alabama had to rebuild their entire offense around Jalen Milrow. So I bring it up because no team is perfect. Everybody has things that have to get fixed in the offseason. And all you can do, I say it all the time, is judge a team, a person, a program, whatever, based on the information that we have right now. And I bring it up because in one week, Coach Prime has done about as good of a job of fixing that offensive line as you possibly can. And I know people say, oh, it's going to take time. We got to see it on the field. I get all that. I can only judge based on what I know right now. And what I know, that offensive line needed to be fixed. They went out and got four guys to do it. Four guys that started over the last couple of years, two of them at the Power 5 level. That's about as good as you can do on top of the fact that you're bringing in a five-star offensive tackle. And I think it's also worth noting this for anybody that's going to get negative and, oh my God, you know, UTEP and UConn, who cares, blah, blah, blah. What I would add, and this is important, just because they got four offensive linemen out of the portal this weekend, just because they got Jordan Seaton out of uh, the high school ranks over the last couple of days, it's not as though they're done. It's not as though we're going to recruit these five guys and that's it. At the end of the day, the portal just opened. The portal just opened. Guys still have another three weeks to get into the portal. So you know more talent is going to go in and you know Coach Prime is going to recruit that talent. He's not going to get everybody. Nobody does. But at the same time, I'll say this. To go into the offseason with a very desperate need off a 4-8 and eight season when everybody in the media, not necessarily me, but most people, are saying, oh my goodness, it's falling apart. Guys are transferring. Coaches are leaving. What did Coach Prime is in over his head? In literally, what, five days? He gets seven or eight commitments, five of them along the offensive line, one a five-star that Ohio State, Alabama, Oregon, and Tennessee wanted? That's pretty darn good to me. And again, he ain't done. I ain't about finding five starters. This is about building competitive depth at the offensive line like it is at every other position. And so I'm excited to see what happens. I'm excited to see what's next. And I would also add this for all the Coach Prime haters out there. This is an important thing that I don't think enough people talk about. Colorado is not as far as you think they are from being very good. Okay? I know they went 4-8 and eight this year. I know it wasn't pretty. I know they started 3-0, and oh, so that means I'm not great at math. But if you started 3-0 and oh and you finished 4-8, and eight, that means you went 1-8 and eight down the stretch. What I am also here to tell you, though, is this. And it's what I've said a couple of times now over the last week or so. As bad as the outsiders think that Colorado was, they really weren't that bad. Eight losses, not ideal, not what anybody signed up for. And certainly when you start 3-0, and you have bigger dreams than to finish 4-8. and I get that. 
But at the same time, what have I said the last couple of weeks? Look at those losses. Five losses of the eight were by a touchdown or less. And remember, the Pac-12 was as tough as it's ever been this year. And it's worth noting that the Big 12 next year, at least on paper, doesn't trend to be nearly as tough as the Pac-12 was this year. There will be no Oregon on Colorado's schedule next year. There will be no, you know, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. U- UCLA was a tough matchup for them this year because UCLA, even though they went 7-5, and five, was great in the trenches. USC was playing its best football when they played Colorado. And so I think, in my opinion, the schedule is going to get a little bit easier and the team should be a lot better. Again, because they weren't that far off. Listen, we talk about all sorts of things on this show and the podcast and the YouTube, whatever. But the bottom line is, if you want the most baseline stat to know when teams are either going to make a big jump or make a big regression. Look at close wins and close losses. Statistically, and I'm not a a stats guy, but the bottom line is if you have a bunch of close wins, if you win a lot of games by a narrow margin of victory, the statistics say that as long as there's not a coaching change, a major roster turnover, those close losses eventually become close wins. And by the way, it's the opposite as well. If you have a bunch, and I think I said, if you have close wins, they, bec- they, they they become close losses and vice versa. If you win five, six games by a touchdown or less, statistically, you're going to lose some of them the next year. I'll give you a quick example because I'm rambling and I'm going a lot of different directions. I haven't even talked about a top 100 player that committed to Coach Prime this weekend. But a few years ago, Michigan State went 10-2, and 11-2, whatever it was, in Mel Tucker's second year on campus. But if you went back and looked, they won, I want to say, like five games by a touchdown or less. The next year, they completely fell apart, went five and seven. Mel Tucker was obviously fired this year. So I just bring it up because statistically, historically, a lot of close losses usually equate to close wins. Well, look at this year. Three-point loss to a nine and three Arizona team, which was one of the great surprises in college football. A six-point loss to a Utah team, which finished eight and four. A seven-point loss to USC when they had the ball late and were driving and had a chance to tie it up. So I don't think this team is that far off. I do think O-line is a priority. And here's the crazy part. Coach Prime ain't done because I haven't even talked about this yet. How about the fact that right before I started recording today, I was just going to talk about the O-line. I was just going to talk about the portal. Then a funny thing happened. Draylon Miller, a fringe five-star, four-star. He's a top 100 prospect, about number 65, 66 in the country, depending on what recruiting service you look at. Wide receiver out of Texas had been committed to Texas A&M. When he decommitted from A&M, the thought was he had ties to LSU and he had ties to USC. It was going to be one of those two schools. Bring it up because over the, not this weekend, but two weekends ago, he visited Colorado with the kid Jaquan McCroy, which we've talked about a lot. And on Sunday, right before I started recording, a funny thing happened. Draylon Miller committed to Colorado. So this just speaks to, listen, a couple things. I, I'm not going to break down Jerry Lyon Miller. There's so much to get into, but I just bring it up because this proves the point that I've been trying to make. You give Coach Prime time. You put him in front of kids. I think everybody wants to speculate about, well, you know, I mean, if, it, you know, four and eight, da, da, da. I said this the other day. Stop being an adult and projecting your opinion on the opinions of 18-year-old kids. 18-year-old kids want to go where it's cool, where there's playing time. As Jordan Seaton said, I want to go play for a guy that has that gold jacket that I eventually want. And so I bring it up because I don't think Coach Prime is done. I know he's not done, and the only question is who's next. Again, hot after a couple high school recruits. By the way, there's a couple high school recruits that we probably don't know about that Colorado's probably in better shape with than we realize. And so I just bring it up. There's more news coming. There's more big players coming. You better be ready. Coach Prime said said it. We coming. And I, I, I tend to think that they're going to, I, I, I tend to think that they're going to finish strong over these next couple of weeks. Remember, there was zero buzz about Travis Hunter until National Signing Day. That he was going anywhere other than Florida State. National Signing Day, he flips to, uh, he flips to Jackson State, of course. Cormani McClain. Going into National Signing Day, zero buzz that he was flipping from Miami. He ends up uh, not signing on National Signing Day, going to Colorado. 
So the only point I try to make, there's a lot of time between now and National Signing Day. And as I've said before, make sure you know where your star recruits are. Make sure you're checking those phone logs and that Coach Prime ain't calling from that Boulder area code, baby. I think it's so fun. I think it's so interesting. And I give him credit. There was a lot of outside noise over these last couple of weeks. He completely ignored it. The bottom line remains, my guy, Coach Prime, did it again. Four offensive linemen this weekend, five transfers overall, plus Draylon Miller, a star wide receiver, another difference maker at that position. If you enjoyed this video, do me a quick favor. Make sure to subscribe to the Aaron Torres Pod YouTube channel. By the way, Torres Media, that's me and my crew. We do sell some merch. We got some cool Coach Prime merch. If you appreciate all of the Coach Prime coverage, click the link in the show description. We got hats. We got shirts. Would appreciate your support. We'll see what Coach Prime does next.